Okay, we just want to get a bit of an idea really about uh, what to do when you've got wood that's not really ideal. Now I showed the saddle graft, I did that last year and I repeated it again because uh, it's such a useful graft and there's a lot of new people coming along here. Now here's um, a nice sound pencil of sign, well I call it, it's called a pencil simply because it's about the same sort of size and shape as a pencil. Some things are quite as simple as they seem. And this is the sort of wood that you want. It's about sort of five, six millimetres thick. Nice, uh, strong stuff from one year's growth. But what if this is all you can get? Because in the real world, an awful lot of stuff just doesn't make it to the level of ideal. Okay, so what are you going to do? Uh, now, if I'm doing a, a, a saddle graft, say I was going to do a saddle graft on, the, on here. Okay, we've been through this before. We make a cut to like that, maybe. Right, and then you um taking great care, not working quick, not working too fast. No, that's not working. Yet. Not working too fast. Uh, you make it cut like this. I'm just doing this very roughly. Um, and you stick the two things together. Okay, that's your saddle graft. Um, that's, that's, I've done that roughly, I'm not going to do that in more detail, I've done it in the other picture. Okay, right, but now let's say you've got a piece of wood that's this sort of diameter, which is maybe the best you can get. So, uh, you do your best with that, but the diameter's not so good really for the saddle graph. You want wood of equal diameter. So, you try and do that and you think, oh dear, that doesn't look that good. Uh, and you put it down one side, obviously it's only going to make one side, it's not going to, the, the cambium isn't going to touch on both sides. Now you might get away with that, you might sort of fine it down like that a little bit and um, tie that in nicely. And there's a reasonable chance that you might get away with that, uh, but it's not really ideal. You want similar diameter. So what do you do if the only wood you've got is a different diameter? We use a different graft. Is a different graft, there's more than one graft that you can use. I'm just going to show a nice easy one now, the cleft graft. It's, um, it's, a, it's not perfect, it's not as good in my view as, the, um, as the, uh, the saddle graft, but it may be the best you can do. I'm going to cut across here, clean cut straight across, and now here we are. I'm using my number 8 opinal for this. I could use this one, but this one's just a little bit heavier in the blade. You see what I'm doing there. Um, very often, if you look at the diameter of the wood, it's not perfectly round, but it's maybe a bit oval. Uh, anyway, find a suitable wood in that place. Again, no, I'm locking my thumbs together. I'm not cutting like this, this poor hands and cut enough. I'm just levering down, getting that in a little bit, and then I'm just um, splitting that. Don't go further than you need to. See where I am with that. All right, see where I'm with that. If I was doing a bigger pit, say here, I might use a heavier knife like this. It's handy to have a number of different. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm taking that for something else. All right, so I've um, I've split this and I'm going to do a cleft graft. So what I'm going to do with a cleft graft. Uh, nice long clean cut there. Again, as with um, the other, other any kind of graft, you need to get a nice, clean, um, straight edge. I'm not going to perfect that necessarily here. You see what I'm doing now? And I'll just do another one to make my point. There's a, you know, sometimes it's the only wood you can get. Uh, a lot of um, people who uh, sort of follow this um, uh, channel and are interested in trying other things, I say, hey Stephen, uh, please call me Stephen, not Dr. Hayes. <laughs> uh, or Steve, uh, that's what Julia calls me. Um, they say, look, I, I know an orchard nearby, or I've got a friend who has a nice um, apple tree, uh, and I want to save a specimen for it, but the orchard's going to be cut down, or I'm moving out of town. Um, I have to act quickly, and there's only some poor quality wood. We'll take the best you can get, do you? Well, you, you can. All right, I'm just sticking this in here. So, um, we'll make two. Can you just see what I'm doing there? 
you're going for the best contact that you can get. Now you need to fiddle around with this because obviously if you stick one in it may loosen the other one and then it won't be quite perfect. You see what I'm doing? If you can film that all the way around. Just hand me the camera. Give you a round the way view of what's going on here. Now this is the tricky bit. You need to make sure you've got good joins all the way around here. This is a double cleft graph. You need to do two. If you're going to do one, if you're going to do a cleft graph, you've got to do two because uh, otherwise you've got a big hole. You, are, you want both of these to grow away. If it becomes clear that they're both growing away very well, you can take the least suitable one and then sneak it out. And obviously there's a little hole there. If I can just hand that back to you. Just going to insert a little bit of wax. Now this is supposed to, you're supposed to be able to, to brush this on. You can only brush it on if it's liquid. Now you can, you can stick this in some hot water. Just take a big mug of hot water and stick that in and it'll melt eventually. Or you can stick it in your pocket. But look, it's pretty hard stuff. So you work it. Just think about ice cream straight from the freezer or butter straight from the fridge. Just with a blunt, a blunt knife like this. And it is okay to use a, you know, an ordinary kitchen knife. Not the very best one. But it's, you know, it's just going to do any harm. It'll, it'll come clean out of here. Just work this as you would um, you know, butter or margarine straight out of the fridge and uh, just um, tip it in there uh, just to fill up the gaps. You don't want gaps. You don't want air, you don't want air spaces. Now with this uh, cleft graph that I've just shown uh, it is reasonably clear that it's holding itself together under some tension. You'll observe that at this stage there are no, there's no um, uh, binding around this. But look, it's fairly, fairly sound. That's because the pressure of this is holding it together. Nevertheless, I will, um, and that is a, by the way, I will, I will put some um, wrapping around here. That's an advantage of the, of the graft. I tend to begin by just sliding a bit down here in between the two. See roughly how I'm doing this. It's, it's, it's no more difficult than tying up your shoelaces, it really is not. Apart from anything else, this keeps bugs out. So that's a double cleft graft, and you'll, you'll observe that the, the advantage of using this is that you can do it with wood of a different diameter. You see, you've got this thin look, well it's only sort of about three millimetres, it's very uh, thin, it's nowhere near as good. You know, ideally you'd like to be having, using material as good as this, but you haven't always got the best material, so you have to make do with what you can. And now I'm just going to, for the sake of argument, just going to show you one more th a trick, similar trick you can do with somewhat thicker diameter, and this is a rind graft. Can you come behind me, please, Julian? And we'll... Uh, just have a quick look at a rind graft. I cut this the other day. Right. Okay, we're just going down there and just lift that up carefully. You see what I'm doing there? Carefully lift it up. Create a little bit of a space there. See what I've done? Now let's take our. Um, now somebody may well say, oh, there's a, I know a better way to do it than that. Hey, great, you make a video and I'll link to it willingly. Uh, so I've basically slipped that down there and I'll slip it in there. You got me. It's reasonably straightforward, isn't it? But the question is, do you slip this on the other side as well to increase the area? Or do you even um, make a little notch? A little tiny notch there to help it fit better, make a little tiny ledge. Whatever you do, you must make sure that this uh, surface, this live surface, is really smooth. And this is why I'm point, I'm point making this now, uh, point of me doing this now, so that you can you know have a good look and have a good video of it. Uh, sorry, have to look at this video and practice. Okay, that's a rind graft. Same uh, business again. You've obviously got some spaces there that you want to uh, to cover over. Rind graft. Now I put a video up 
uh, yesterday, I think, the Somerset Red Streak Apple and how I rind grafted that. That was his technique. Rind graft. Just filling in the gaps there with a bit of, uh, of, of wax. If you can't get hold of this wax, I mean, you know, this is £4.64. This is enough to last you for many, many years. Uh, but you could manage with something like Vaseline or putty, something like that. The traditional thing is beeswax. Yeah. Well, then you've got to melt it, you see. This is, this is based on beeswax. That's how I do it. Or possibly another a better way might be to... Uh, oops, sorry, I made a bit of a mess there. Uh, obviously, if you made a mess like that, you'd have, to, you'd have to pull it out and start again. I forget I, I, forget I did that. Um, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm just putting this up because this is, what, this is just to show what I do. You know, I have had a reasonable measure of success. If anyone's got any better ways to do it, uh, any criticisms, please post them. Um, better still, if you've got your own um, examples, then uh, show us them too. Uh, this, is, uh, this is YouTube. This is popular, <laughs> popular uh, um, amateur video. Um, okay, then so. So I showed, I demonstrated the, um, obviously, and obviously this is, a, this is on a dead bit of wood, right, in the, in the house, just to cut the wind noise out and make it a little easier. Uh, I showed the saddle graft the other day. Here we are, there's a cleft graft, and, um, and here's a, a rind graft. You could possibly do the cleft graft another way with um, a similar a diameter. Here's another way of doing it, perhaps. You know I'm using a slightly larger knife. You can press different stuff into service. You got me? So that's just another take. That's another take on the cleft graft. As you can see that doesn't quite fit. So what I'll probably do maybe is uh, Make it a bit narrower, make a more abrupt shoulder just there. Great go coming towards myself. And uh, yeah, that's another take, another take on the uh, on the cleft graft. And um, if you can just film from the side here, you can see through it. As I lash that in, you'll see as I lash in that in, that um, it's going to pull that in so you get a better edge. Now I'm obviously, I'm hurrying this a little bit and this is not perfect. That's just another take on the, the wedge graft. The principles are all the same. If you get a book like um, R.J. Garner, uh, there isn't another book like R.J. Garner, there is only R.J. Garner, The Grafter's Handbook, fantastic book. I've got, and I've got a signed original first edition, by the way. It's amazing what you find, you've got your eyes open sometimes. Uh, then you'll see there's a load of different attack, uh, attack, uh, takes, a load of different takes on different grafts. The principles are all roughly the same. Uh, the key thing is uh, timing, good sharp edges, cleanliness and uh, get the edges together. When I say timing, I mean cut the wood. When it's deeply dormant, store it appropriately and then graft it onto uh, live wood in the appropriate season. And there's lots of different little ways of doing it. Uh, I mean, you can, for example, I've seen a slightly different version of the saddle graft where uh, you make a really, really long uh, bit like this, for example. Uh, I've seen this done, I've even tried it. It's all, as long as you stick to the principles, it's amazing what you can get away with. You see that's just like um, a very long tapering bit. And um, There's another way, just another way of doing the same graft. Oh, it's 
best I can. See what I've done there? That is topographically the same as the saddle graft. Uh, but by, by just taking this very long sliver on both sides, I've just married that in differently. You said it's just a, a different tape, a different take on the um, saddle graft, and that's just another way of doing the same uh, thing, uh, getting around the problem of having um, a different diameter wood. Yeah, RJ, RJ Garner, the Grafter's Handbook, it's still in print. And this is a bit rough and ready. I'm, um, you know, I'm doing this as I, in real time as I go along. I haven't got a script and Julia's filming for me. And um, yes, it's all a bit rough and ready. And if anyone, anyone wants to say, hey, I know someone else has put YouTube up which shows this better, then hey, you know, link to it. You'll find me uh, grateful. I'm just going to take a last uh, uh, film around that. You see what I've done? Okay, that bit at the top, that's not quite right. Uh, but this is a, you know, a rough and ready show. That's uh, just a slightly different take on the saddle graft. Okay, all you really need is a, a sharp knife with a small blade, a steady hand, a bit of grafting wax, and some um, tape cut from a regular freezer bag. It's not difficult, I learned um, from books, particularly uh, Raymond Bush, uh, which I, I read his books a long time before I got hold of R.J. Garner, and the good old uh, fruit garden displayed, uh, which the Royal Horticultural Society, despite me asking them very nicely, have refused to bring back into print, so shame on that, pick up a copy if you can. Uh, but yeah, this isn't, you know, grafting, it's not too difficult, and it's a good, um, a good skill to learn.